Hey there, welcome to ComScience Simplified. In this week's video, we'll look into a popular JavaScript interview question that will help us understand the inner workings of the language in a greater detail. So let's get started. The interviewer presents you with this code snippet and asks you to predict the expected output. A for loop which contains just a single set timeout statement. The set timeout takes a function that just logs the variable i pass to it after a particular time interval that is also a multiple of i. Simple enough, right? So let's see what our thought process would be. Hmm. There is a variable i, it's being logged inside a timer function being passed to the set timeout and the set timeout is being set for multiples of every second. So it should just log the value of i during each loop, right? That means the expected answer for this question is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 being outputted at intervals of 1 second, correct? Let's say that's our predicted answer. Let's check whether we are correct. Well, there's a reason this question is being asked in an interview. It's not that straightforward. Let's explore why. Before that, let's look at what the actual output for this code snippet is. The correct answer for this question is that the number 6 gets printed 5 times separated by 1 second each. Mind blown? Just wait till you hear the explanation behind it. Before we do that, now that you know the correct output, can you pause this video and think why that happens? Take a moment. Here's the explanation. As we know, variables using the var keyword follow function level scoping and not block level scoping. This means this piece of code behaves as if there is one declaration of i in the global scope because it got hoisted and every iteration of the loop modifies this variable. The timeout is then set with that instance of i and we just have a single instance of i because of which we get the same output separated by one second each. Note that the function does not get executed in this context right away. It is just added to the event loop. To understand how the set timeout works with the event loop, check out this video in which we explain the details about that. Basically, at the end of the for loop, the variable has the value 6 stored in it. And thus, when the set timeout finally executes after getting pulled out from the event queue, that value stored in that variable is console logged. Now that you know why that output is not as expected, the interviewer decides to take it a step further. How do you change the code in order to get the output that is expected? That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 being printed at intervals of 1 second each. Here is one probable solution. Don't get scared just yet. Let's explore together what this code means. What we did is just wrap the code in an immediately invoked function expression or an ify. To learn more about ify, check out our functions video. As we know that var is function scoped, we are trying to take advantage of that by capturing the value of i inside each new function that is generated during each loop iteration. In this case, inside every new function, a new variable j is being created. This acts like a closure scope for the inner set timeout function and thus the value of each variable stored in the scope is logged when the console.log executes and we get separate values. If you do not understand the concept of closures, do not worry as we are planning a video on it soon. Pause the video if you are having difficulty grasping the concept. Give it some time. We have given a solution to the problem, but you know how interviews are. The interviewer is not yet happy. He asks for a more better solution for the same problem. You stare at him in disbelief. But here is a more elegant solution to the same problem. Confused as to why this would work? Notice the let keyword instead of the var. The let keyword introduced in ES6 is block scoped and not function scoped. And hence, it behaves in a special way when used inside the for loop like this. What that means is, the variable declaration now virtually exists inside the for block body and each iteration gets its own brand new variable declared by the let keyword. Which means, the job of the ify is now being taken care by the let keyword and a new value is getting captured inside the closure scope of set timeout as a result. This code also successfully prints 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the console with an interval of 1 second. And it looks elegant as well. The interviewer is happy. Way to go. That was a brief explanation of how we go about solving an interview question that is theoretical in nature. 
We first look into what concepts would be applicable in this particular scenario and then move further in that direction. Subscribe to our channel if you like the video as we are planning to do an entire series around interviews. Also, do check out our other videos as well. We believe you'll love those. That's all for now. See you in the next one. Take care and happy learning.